didn't always look and sound like the shop you see today. In fact, just a few years ago, the idea of building a school to train our own IM mechanics was about as out there as using the car lift as an amusement ride. We came here and there was nothing. This was an empty room. This was, you know, it, it looks nice now and it looks like a shop and everything. I didn't even have a door that I could pull a car into this building. But Local 701 in the district, backed by the IAM, were on a mission to train tomorrow's auto and diesel technicians. I gotta say I am so proud of what they have done here. This is a perfect example of the IAM's commitment to education and to training. So 701 went to work. The first thing they needed was money to start the project and a way to get employers on board. Hunter Equipment signed on early and fast and today are still one of the largest supporters of this program. And so it took a lot of work to convince employers that you got to step up to the plate as well. And so between the IAM, Local 701, the employers, and with the help of FMCS uh, providing some grant money, this all came to reality. And it worked. But more important, it worked the way 701 wanted it to work. Small classes, no more than 10 at a time, and career training, not just a job title and a piece of paper. You see, there are trade schools all over the world that offer extraordinary opportunities to a sea of kids, but many come with a cost, and we mean dollars. The 701 program, four years for about $1,400. And that wouldn't have happened had it not been the vision of, of this local and its leadership to say, we can't charge a young person $35,000 to learn how to work on an auto, automobile. We've got to figure out a way to make it happen. They do not pay any tuition. The only thing they're paying for is basically the stuff they use. They come two days a week, classes five hours a day, so they're doing 10 hours of class a week, and then they need to do a minimum of 24 hours on the job. One other aspect that they do for these young folks is they place them in a place of employment as well. That's absolutely unheard of. And so not only do they get training here at the facility, they get hands-on real-life training at their place of employment as well. Real-life training at an IAM shop. This isn't like for-profit schools where you go for years and walk away with a degree, but no job and probably some debt. This is a career, and employers are already calling for the next batch of recruits. It's nice that me and the other instructors, you know, who, if you put us all together, you know, there's over 100 years of training there, but we're, we're, we're doing it the way we feel that it should be done without worrying about making money off of the students. But don't let the sentiment fool you. This isn't just oil changes these young adults are learning. We're learning brakes right now, and I use that knowledge every day. I need to know how to cut rotors, compress calipers, just the basics, and plus they teach you how to uh, flare brake lines, run brake lines, bend them. It's just stuff I need to know. But here we do cover the basics and then go deeper into different stuff, suspension brakes, using the scan tools, which is very important these days with the newer cars. We're learning how to back probe and probe into wheel speed sensors to see if we have any issues with them, high resistance, opens in the circuits and things like that right now. And once we're done with this, uh, we're going more in depth into steering and suspension components of the vehicles. The best part is that they aren't just learning what makes an engine hum. They are taught safety, job skills like being on time, the why behind a car issue and not just some band-aid solution, but also they are learning what it means to be union. These young adults are required to go to meetings and pay dues. No longer do words like pension or CBA go unnoticed. I look at it where we have a member cradle the grave. We've trained this, this, this individual to put food on his table for his family forever and ever. A union member from cradle to grave. That's another product that comes out of this garage. So what's next for the machinists in the 701 Training Center? Well, the sky's the limit on that one. 
five times the size. We need more, we need more space. We're already you know, starting to outgrow what we have. Um, getting into more areas. Uh, we represent uh, more people. You know, we're starting to, to look more into the forklifts. We represent people with forklifts. Um, we represent machinists. We represent some welders. Uh, create a program for every field that we represent somebody in. This is just the very beginning, the very beginning of what will very shortly become something really great. For the Automotive News Network, I'm Deirdre Kinevsky.